Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to my DIY workshop. This video is about drilling holes in wood and metal. I'll be showing you how to drill clean holes in the correct position, but I also want to talk about drilling machines as well as the drill bits that make the hole. So let's have a look at the drilling machines themselves. First of all I'm showing you um, a hand drill. These have been around for many many years but I wouldn't dismiss it as being old fashioned and out of place because it has its use. It takes uh, drill bits up to 6.5 millimeter diameter. It's very good for quickly drilling small holes in muddle making or other small delicate work and also you can put your countersunk bit in there to save swapping drill bits when you're using a power drill. So it does have its place. That's the, called a chuck and that's what holds your uh, drill bit or countersunk bit. This is a 4.5mm drill and I'll just quickly drill a hole. I'm using a certain amount of pressure and a nice steady winding action as you can see I got through there quite quickly and by the way to tighten up or loosen the chuck I grip this handle and this handle together so that I can turn the, the chuck and as you can see it quickly makes a countersunk indent ready for a wood screw that of course is softwood. If it was hardwood it would take slightly longer. As an alternative to using the hand drill, if you've got one you can use your cordless screwdriver. It is only slow but as you can see as a separate tool to run with your hand drill it saves swapping bits over when you're doing several things to the same hole. And while I'm showing you this I'll show you this other one as well. This is a, an ordinary twist drill with a hexagon end to fit the hexagon socket in. And again, it's slow, but you can use it. A certain amount of pressure, and then reverse to come out. And now we come to my favourite. This is a cordless power drill. But in fact it's more than that, it's three in one. It's called a combi or combination drill because it's three in one. It does ordinary drilling. So as you can see that was quite quick. This is a 13 millimeter drill. The chuck itself is 13 millimeter capacity so the chuck controls the maximum size drill that you can use. The drill has variable speed on the trigger. It's also got two speeds here. It's got a removable battery and in the kit that I purchased I got a spare battery so you can be using the drill while your spare battery is charging. It has a forward and reverse. By inserting a masonry drill bit and changing the setting here to hammer action we can drill masonry. And by inserting a screwdriver bit we can actually use the machine as a screwdriver. The first and most important of these is the high speed steel twist drill. It's for wood and metal. This is a good general purpose drill bit because it will drill metals like aluminium, brass and mild steel as well as wood. They are available in box sets like this with sizes from 1 to 13 mm or in smaller sets with a selection of useful sizes. It's a good idea to keep your drills in a specially organised case like this because when you open it you can quickly see if one is missing and you can quickly examine the tips to see if any of them are blunt and need replacing or sharpening. 
if you never need to drill holes bigger than a 13 millimeter then look no further when buying though pay a little bit extra for these high-speed steel twist drills cheaper ones may drill wood okay but will quickly go blunt when trying to drill steel this is called a brad point twist drill and there's your brad point there it, it penetrates the wood when you're trying to drill and so the drill can't wander so you end up with a hole exactly where you want it if you're using a power drill it can obviously do some damage so if you've been using it, let the chuck stop turning before you put it down and when you put it down, make sure it's somewhere safe where it won't fall on the floor. The electric cable, if you have one, needs to be long enough, including an extension lead, so that you can reach your workplace without tugging on the cable. Finally, safety glasses. Wear these when drilling any kind of material with lots of splinters flying off. So now I'm going to have a go at drilling this old piece of steel tube. It's a square tube shape. I've put a mark there where I want to drill. One of the problems with using a uh, twist drill like this is that it's difficult to get it started exactly where you want. It, the drill tends to wander around. So the secret is to take what we call a centre punch, which is ground very sharp, tilt the centre punch so that you can see your mark on the steel, and a couple of sharp whacks with a hammer. So now we've got a little indent there, which should make it much easier for the drill to start. Now, when drilling, especially drilling metal, it's always best to clamp it somehow. So I'm going to start with the hand drill, and it won't be very quick at all, but we will be cutting in. Now I don't know whether you can see, but we're already getting swarf showing that the drill is actually cutting into the steel. I am pressing down quite hard. I haven't been drilling very long, but as you can see, I'm getting quite a pile of um, swarf. I'm going to swap the drill over into the power drill. Now with a power drill, drilling metal, you need to be on the lowest speed. And I can slow it down even more by not pressing the trigger too much, because the trigger is a speed control. Now if I put that in there now, and I'm through. Now, when you get this swarf, some of it can be really quite nasty, tidy it up straight away. Some of it will drop on the floor, so sweep up quite often because you don't want to be walking that nasty uh, metal swarf into the house. What I want to demonstrate now is drilling a thin sheet of metal. Now, when the drill gets partly through and is starting to break through to the other side, it can jam in the metal and therefore spin the metal very fast, like a propeller. And you obviously don't want that hitting your body or your hand. So let's proceed without it being clamped down and wearing a protective leather glove. First of all, we need to centre punch where we want the hole, so you can use the centre punch that I showed you before. Here's another tip. If you haven't got a centre punch, you can use a fat screw. So I'm just holding the metal down with my hand. Start very slowly. I'm just starting to cut. There's metal swarf coming off now. Keeping the drill speed down by not pressing the trigger all the way. Now I can tell that it, the drill is going to break through in a minute. Now that's what I meant about spinning. The better way 
is clamping. So more clamped up, I've got a, a bit of scrap uh, MDF underneath the clamp to stop marking the metal. I'm ready to go. So I haven't got to hold the metal down so I can concentrate on holding the drill and drilling vertically. And I can drill a little bit faster. And we're through. Again we need to get rid of that nasty swarf. The next item I want to show you is this mains operated electric drill. It's many years old and so it's got an old fashioned chuck on it which needs a chuck key. If you've got a drill like this always know where your chuck key is because you can't improvise with any other tool in your toolbox. I've got a control here that switches on or off the hammer action for drilling into masonry with obviously a special masonry drill bit. I've got a gearbox inside here with um, a control here so that I'm on speed 1 or speed 2. I've got a variable speed control here. And also I've got some speed control here on this trigger. Just run it steadily and I can increase it. And I can lock the trigger on with this button here, so I'm going to press the trigger again to release. So if I put it into the drill stand, tighten up so that the drill is locked in there, I can take a piece of wood and if I want to drill a hole there, to make sure the drill is going to drill on the mark I need to look that way and that way. You need to look in two directions. A drill stand guarantees that you will drill at 90 degrees to the surface of your piece of wood. Two more things to tell you about the drill, the drill stand, and that is that we've got a depth gauge here. By adjusting this, we can ensure that the drill won't go deeper than a measurement that you've decided. The other thing is that normally you would use the drill stand fixed with four screws to a bench or some other solid surface, but in this case I've got it fixed just to this block of wood in my vice so that I can quickly lift it out and do something else on the bench. Now if you want to drill bigger than 13mm you have to move on to something like this. This one's called a flat wood drill bit or sometimes it's called a spade drill bit. The drill tip does not wander when starting a new hole because it's got something like the brad point on the previous drill. That width there governs the size of the hole and this is just a hexagonal shank. This part is called the shank and that will go into um, all of the power tools. I'm going to drill a hole in a moment on that mark in this piece of wood using this flat wood bit which will drill a hole 22mm diameter. But I need to put a piece of wood underneath because I don't want this metal bit going right down and damaging the metal base. To be absolutely sure it won't go down I've set my depth gauge. It will stop the drill bit hitting the base, although it will start to drill in this second piece of wood. So this is the hole that we drilled. We started there and finished there. And one of the reasons why it's such a clean hole is because we had it on a piece of backing wood. 
that's the end of my video and I hope you found some interesting tips there to use in your kind of DIY work. If you like what you saw, you may like to subscribe to my channel in order to get automatic notification when I launch future videos. To do that, just click on the circular avatar appearing on the left of the screen. Otherwise, you may like to watch one of my other two videos which deal with drilling and you, to do that you can click one of the icons appearing on the right of the screen. Thank you very much for watching.